Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Thank you again to everybody who's been participating in the polls, giving some great votes and feedback as to what kinds of content you'd like to see. The animation vote was a close second up against photo editors and other things. So, hey, let's take a look at some more animation, and let's do that today. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much for being here. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of that information and also be a part of a learning community of common folk who are trying to learn and, and grow and experience new technologies alongside of you. So welcome. So animation, I bet you're wondering what kind. <laughs> on this channel, we've touched on things like 2D animation in Krita. We've touched on stop motion animation in um, Digicam Control. It took me a second. <laughs> now, I want to focus in on some composite animation, giving the examples in Caden Live, which is a fantastic free open source tool, but kind of thinking outside the box a little bit for animating titles. That's a very trendy thing going on these days with how you present information in your content creation efforts or just in how you tell stories. So let's dig into that. So here I have Kden Live. I'll put a download link uh, in the description below if you're interested to try this out. You lose nothing by doing that. It's free. It's open source, run by a fantastic group of developers. This particular version I'm running on right now is version 2012.1, if it gives you a point of reference. So titles, it's really, really easy to start working with titles in that in your project bin, you just right click and you click on add title clip. And the title interface is fairly easy to understand. You click, you start typing and your controls are right along the right hand side here in terms of styling you have a gradient option if you want to try that out uh, there is a shadow option which is pretty snazzy coming out of the uh the default options it will start to add a kind of a gaussian blur effect the more you you set it on uh, so that's an option to tack on or off you can see the difference as i play with that a little bit there so options to try um, also, there's some alignment options. There's some basic animation controls right here, but I'll be honest, these are not fantastic <laughs> in this interface. It's actually better to use the transform controls, and we've touched on that in other videos, which is I'd suggest go check that out. If you're really curious what this part does, I'll just show you in that. You can click Edit Start, and really all you're doing is you're pretending like this is the viewable space of your screen. Um, if you wanted to do like a zoom effect, then you'd change the size here to say, okay, 50%, or you could, I believe, free resize it, whatever works. But I'm just going to say 50% and then say, I'm going to start my screen here. So it's pretending like it's going to be zoomed in up to that point, uh, that green space, and framing it that way. And then same thing, if I edit my end, it's assuming, okay, well, that is my end shot. And that's what it would look like. So I'm not a big fan of this approach to things because it's kind of clunky. It doesn't give you a lot of feel to play. There's no keyframing. It's it's really limited. So use it if you want to, but that's not the best way to get it done. So you can create a title again just by doing this. There's two options for doing this. You could either just create it and it becomes a part of your project, or you can actually save it as well alongside, which is cool because then it gets to be reusable. If you anticipate the layout, the styling, uh, even kind of the general thing that you're building something you're going to reuse many times in the future go ahead and do that because you can load that title back in and just change the text update maybe some of the styling or spacing um, on an as needed basis and it makes it that much more efficient to use so that's a good option to have uh, so i've already made up some tiles here let's get into the fun part now the animation in that um, I found there were some interesting things that I hadn't discovered before, and they offer some interesting ideas if you're looking to animate uh, some, some new ways of, of making motion. There's some VR pieces of this, which the intention of it is to map your viewable space into a 3D uh, outlook, a 3D perspective, but you can also use it to generate some very interesting animation, which is what I've been playing with. 
This one, I'm using the filter. I'm going to hop over here to effects. I'm using the 360 trans VR 360 transform. And just to briefly hop through these, this control here controls the horizontal uh, rotation as if you're in a bubble just or a circle, just to imagine. The pitch would be if you're going to pitch up and down. And then the roll is literally to roll the object either way. So those are the basic controls uh, that are set up here. Keyframing, we've touched on that before. Uh, whether it's going to be smooth or not smooth, uh, we've been all over all of those things. Um, but what I've done with this is I've set just a beginning keyframe and an ending keyframe, making some adjustments, and we can see what that's going to do. And again, this is just playing with the principle of mapping this within 3D space. And you can do something very interesting there in that we're making kind of like this almost like liquid effect that then resolves back up into what I made, which is an interesting idea. You could play with that kind of thing, change the keyframes a little bit, and you could you could make it do some really cool things with just playing with 3D space in that way. So that, that's a really intriguing thing to explore. Some other good options, and again, just digging through the different effects that I found, I tried out this one here, which was distort, which is literally playing with it in terms of like a frequency interpretation, your amplitude and your frequency, which plays with wavelength and the space between the wavelengths. So I played with that a little bit, made a couple keyframes, and you can kind of see what that turned into where it made this kind of buzzing or flittery effect on wavelengths and gave us some really interesting things to look at. That could be a really useful way of introducing or transitioning titles, um, which you can animate. You can keyframe them very easily. So another really good one to try again. These are just kind of the ones that I dug through and thought, okay, well, there's some good animation value here. There's so many of them there. Check them out. Another good one here to play with. Uh, I did a combination of transform and I found something called the mirror effect, which is really interesting. What you can do with that is this, where you can get the kind of effect of, I'm gonna fold and flip it around. I'm gonna invert it, which you actually can't do with a simple transform, at least not in Caden Live. Because when you try to invert it, it just goes blank. It doesn't interpret the font or the typeface backwards. Because again, remember, this is, a, this is actual text, it's a font. So to get around that, there is this other effect here called a mirror which I'm using the flip option. There's a couple different choices here, but the flip option is what then gives you that ability to invert it the other way. Now the motion is all being done by transform. I mentioned that earlier. That is just a simple process of literally animating uh, motion of the layer of, of this, in this case, the title. Uh, I had to flip on this distort option which kind of takes you away from the idea of you want to maintain the you know the the way it's it, normal look of things it allows you to distort it um, it doesn't give you 3d distortion just keep that in mind so it's just more like free form within the cube but it still gives you this kind of idea where you can bend things or at least have the illusion of such uh, you also have to take off the aspect ratio lock to make sure it doesn't try to keep it as you move it that it doesn't try to keep the the, sh the general shape of what it started out as with the screen size. So those two things, taking off the lock and putting on distort lets you bend it this way. And then using mirror in combination with that lets you create the rest of the illusion that it's flipping around. So another interesting idea to try out and play with the concept of, of how you use titles and animate those titles. One final thing, and this is the really fun one. I did a combination of using, again, one of those VR360 ones. This one is hard to pronounce, so I'm gonna do my best with this one, but it's called VR360 Equirectangular to Rectangular. <laughs> and using that in combination, again, with, uh, mo with Transform, what we're able to do is do again this fold effect and again i'm using mirror here as well same idea as this example i just showed here but i'm trying to simulate more more of that perspective 3d-ness um, so we're getting close 
It's not a perfect match, and the footage, like, this is just a rough example. It's not matched up well. It could be better in a lot of ways, but this is just to simulate what we're doing here. And that I was trying to say, okay, well, could we kind of sort of get the idea of folding, like, as if the text was actually with you, like you're moving around an object where the text is placed in 3D space. And you can start to get there with this, which is pretty cool. This opening movement is not so great, because, again, I didn't shoot the footage in the best way to do that. But this last part works pretty good. Now, I mentioned I use a slightly different VR360 one. The reason I did that is because it gives you a few more options, and I'll show you what those are. Um, you still have those other things that I mentioned, which were the horizontal uh, movement, the vertical movement, the roll for the actual rolling of the object, Field of view will actually, will actually take the whole circle, as if you will, and try to move that around. So that was an interesting thing. And fish eye will bend it a little bit further within that, you know, reshaping of that bubble, so to speak. So you have a, a few more options here using that particular effect, which gave me some other options to kind of play with how far into this or, you know, how deep we were. Uh, so again, interesting things here now it gets a little more realistic this is slow which is easier to work with when you're trying to animate i sped it up and it starts again to really look like something interesting it starts to look really clean really interesting the ending is a lot more believable than the start because again the video footage wasn't shot quite so well but you could start to tighten it up you could start to move the transform keyframes a little bit here up in this one adjusting our starting position of where the screen is, you could really start to match up that motion and start to play with it as if it were in 3D space. So this is really cool. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of the, the, the three examples I wanted to show through here. I just kind of have the eye-opening experience of, hey, there's more to do. There's actually more space to play in here than just what appears out of the box. You can really manipulate these things in different ways, try out these filters, which aren't really even designed to play like this, but they work and you can get more, more functionality out of them and really expand your storytelling capability with these ideas. So I hope that's helpful and gives you some more information to try out. These type of approaches are kind of specific to Kden Live, I'll say that. Um, the other approaches used in things like Resolve are a bit more refined in some ways, but they're also more limiting in that, in that if you don't like the way the templated thing is built, you don't have a lot of control over what you do with it from there. But again, it can pre-build a lot of stuff. There's a little bit more 3 dness to them and it can be fancier in that regard. So we may look at those in the future. Today, I was just given some really basic examples of how you could build out these things using a free solution. I, re I realize that Resolve is somewhat free, mostly, <laughs> uh, but a totally free solution and give you some ideas of how you might be able to use things and actually achieve animation, clean animation, uh, using some different techniques. So again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If this was interesting to you, if it was helpful to you, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome, awesome things we're going to do and learn and experience together in the future. And leave a comment. Ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community, because it's awesome when I'm able to help, when our community is able to help, and we can help each other learn and grow in our experiences together. So thank you so much. I will see you again at the next video.